There may be a recession going on out there somewhere, but you certainly couldn't tell here in Las Vegas as over 2,000 exhibitors, more than 140,000 attendees are here at a bigger than ever fall comdex. Lots of new product introductions from the big guys like Microsoft and Intel, also new products from smaller companies with names you've probably never even heard of. Today we'll show you the best of what's new at fall comdex on the special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me here at Comdex is Tim Baharin, President of Creative Strategies. Tim, as usual, Comdex is more than any one person can comprehend. You've been all over the floor, over to the different exhibits. What are the most interesting product categories, new products you've seen? Right. Well, clearly multimedia is one of the hottest things at this show. People are clamoring to go over to Valleys to see in the showcase there in multimedia what's, what it's all about and what are the new products. They've heard about video for Windows. They've heard about the new audio products. They want to see how you bring video and audio into the computer and, and how it can change the way they work. So that's clearly one of the hottest topics. Another one is portability. They're looking at the products like the Z-Lite from Zenith and uh, Zio sub notebooks to find out how they can have new yet powerful devices that are light that can go with them. And they look for the docking devices. How do they hook them to the desktop and make them even more powerful? And then the third area is color. For the first time, we're starting to see good color products for output. I mean, we've used a color screen for years. We really need low-cost color output. So we saw color scanners, color copiers, color printers for the first time. Under that 10,000 range, some of them in the under 5,000 range, that make color output feasible. So those are the three things that I think are pretty hot at this show. Okay, we're going to start out by taking a look at multimedia as we visit the multimedia showcase over at Bally's Grand Hotel. No, this was not produced on a computer. This was a full-blown live rock concert put on at Comdex by Micrographics as a fundraiser on behalf of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. But it did set the tone for the focus on sound and video at this fall Comdex. Both Apple and Microsoft went after Windows users with video products. Microsoft was showing off its new Video for Windows, which is a software package that lets you do limited video inside Windows. There are several modules in the package, including the Media Player, which lets you do basic cut and paste operations with video clips, Vid Edit, which lets you combine video from various sources, Vid Cap, a capture utility, which converts analog sources into digital video files, and three separate compression algorithms for file storage. Video for Windows includes a CD-ROM video clip art collection and a conversion utility, which lets you play QuickTime videos in the Windows environment. Video for Windows has a nice feature called scalability, which automatically adjusts the video to take advantage of a coprocessor. It can also compensate for a slow machine by taking video shortcuts while maintaining audio continuity. Video for Windows runs at only 15 frames per second, and the resolution is only 160 by 120, but it is video, and it retails for under $200. Apple was touting its Windows version of QuickTime, primarily designed for video playback on a PC. It is a subset currently in the 1.0 version of QuickTime for Windows. It's about 90 of the APIs, or some 200 odd on the Macintosh right now. It is the QuickTime architecture from the Macintosh brought over to the Windows environment and it allows for low-level editing and playback on the Windows environment. So the basic model here is that developers, content providers author on the Macintosh and they're able to play them back in the Windows environment. But if you really want serious video on your PC, you need more than software. The Intel Indio board lets you capture video from any source and then lets you play back the video at up to 30 frames per second using Intel's DVI technology. The Indio video technology means real-time compression decompression. The Indio system also automatically detects computer performance and adjusts frame rate and screen size to optimize video playback. The board costs $1,000, but that is about a third of what the same technology used to cost just a short while ago. 
A company called Electricon Technology was showing its any video board, only $495 for a card that lets you import video from three separate input sources. The Ani video card has its own onboard video processor and therefore performance does not depend on your CPU speed. The Ani video board also offers enhanced stereo audio controls and comes with a built-in power amplifier for audio. It goes into any standard 16-bit ISA or ESA slot. MediaVision demoed its new Pro Movie Spectrum. It's a video card and software package that also lets you capture, edit, and display full motion video sequences on your computer. You can either capture a single frame, you can capture a series of frames, or an entire video sequence, including sound. You can capture either 15 seconds of video, 30 seconds of video, or you can say, I want to capture up to uh, 10 megabytes of video. There are various parameters you can set to capture it. Once it's captured, it's saved as a particular type of file. You can then take that file and go into an editing uh, module. In this editor, you can do some very basic cut, copy, and paste functions to make the video sequence that you were playing with look just exactly the way you want it to. Pro Movie Spectrum also includes several compression algorithms and comes bundled with Microsoft's Video for Windows and Macromedia's Action 2.5. Pro Movie Spectrum does not require Windows and can run just under DOS. The complete hardware software package lists for under $400. Adobe was demonstrating Premiere 2.0, which lets you edit QuickTime videos on the Macintosh with sophisticated digital effects. With Premiere, you can fly objects, use twist, zoom and distortion effects. You also have a full menu of video transitions, including page turns, spins, and 40 other ADO type effects. Adobe Premiere also has full featured audio capability, including echo and backwards replay. And there were standalone video clip libraries for the video developer. This Animals CD from Software Toolworks features 200 exotic animal clips in an hour of video material. And Knowledge Adventure was showing off its new dinosaur disc. This was not a CD-ROM, but an interactive book on magnetic media featuring 256 color videos, photos and illustrations, plus a stereo soundtrack. Knowledge Adventure claimed to have the first floppy disc-based product with full motion color video and stereo sound. IBM was focusing on multimedia, but jumping to the next logical environment, network multimedia. And according to Big Blue, there are many reasons why shared multimedia requires a mainframe for a server. One is the uh, availability of high-speed uh, uh, lines. And uh, a T1 line uh, has a speed of 1.544 uh, megabits. Uh, a typical uh, line that a person would have on their home computer with a modem might be 2,400 bits per second. So you can see the vast difference in the uh, speed and power we have six of these uh, T1 lines installed here in Las Vegas on the floor that we're using to transmit data. Uh, and when you look at multimedia, we have uh, the video data particularly requires very large uh, uh, data files. The uh, uh, objects are very large and they're measured in the millions of bytes of data. So it really does require a high-speed network to do that. Commodore was also exhibiting at the Multimedia Showcase, unveiling its newest Amiga, the Model 1200, which is a low-cost version of the Amiga 4000. Despite the price of only $699 for the entire system, it comes bundled with built-in customized sound and graphics chips, no add-ons required for multimedia. Commodore owned the multimedia market five years ago and must have been looking at this multimedia showcase with a combination of satisfaction and frustration. On the sound side of multimedia, there were several new products that let you bring voice annotation into business documents. Lips Inc. showed off Lips for Windows, a product that lets you add spoken comments to standard computer applications, such as word processing documents or spreadsheets. The address, the phone number, the fax number, they're all on the screen in front of you. Please, get it done. I'll, again, I'll give you a call this afternoon. Thanks, you're all. The software also lets you set up automatic oral reminders for appointments or other events. 90 seconds of Lips speech take up about one megabyte of memory. The software-only version lists for under 
Interactive Ink was demoing a unique product called Sound Exchange, which lets you do the same thing using a standard telephone handset, which attaches to the side of your computer and plugs into the parallel port. Interactive also offers M-Mail, a multimedia email program, which lets you send voice messages along any standard local area network. Electronic Speech Systems offered the lowest cost audio solution, a $45 sound chip called the Audio Magician, that lets you add spoken words to Windows documents. The sound adapter features a single chip VLSI audio processor. The adapter comes bundled with six desktop audio utilities. The time is 12.35 p.m. Finally, if video and audio weren't enough multimedia for you, there was also 3D. Apple showed off what it called navigable video, which lets you move through a video scene in a kind of virtual reality interface, uninhibited by predetermined camera angles. This was a Macintosh tour through the Pavlovsky Palace in Russia. And for real holographic 3D, there was the prototype of Sun's new holographic workstation, complete with stereo shutter glasses. You are seeing the images on the CRT display, but to the user with the goggles, the objects appear as three-dimensional holograms in the space in front of the computer screen. Next up, Windows, Windows, Windows. It was clear at this Comdex that two companies dominate the PC industry, Intel on the hardware side, Microsoft on the software side. But neither company is prepared to just sit still. Intel went after competitor AMD by bringing out its new low-power 486 SL chip for notebooks, and Microsoft moved to strengthen one of its few weak flanks, database software. This is Access, the new Microsoft entry into the database field, along with Word and Excel. Microsoft now has major entries in the three principal business software categories. Access is a relational database that can read DBase and Paradox files. It features drag and drop data entry, icons and dynamic hot buttons which change function depending on the task at hand. Access also offers object linking and embedding capability. So users can insert audio, video, or any binary object created by an OLE server. Access features Microsoft Wizards, which asks the user questions about content and style for reports or forms, and then automatically create them. Access also has a unique online help system called Cue Cards, which provide task-sensitive demos inside the program to help you complete a task. Microsoft is using its deep pockets to shove Access out there, offering it for only $99 for the next few months. List price is $495. Microsoft coupled its Access intro with the debut of its newly acquired FoxPro 2.5 database program. Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates says he hopes to cover all the bases with the double product launch. A big part of the existing database market are people who work with DBase type products. And so we developed the Fox product uh, to meet their needs. It's the fastest, most powerful, easiest to use DBase type product ever. The Access product has been aimed more at, at new users um, and how it focuses on the graphical interface. Uh, we have made it clear we're going to bring the two products together, but we're also making it clear who should use each one now. And I think uh, it will allow us to, to make an even bigger impact on the market than any single product could. Borland was pushing its new Paradox for Windows database program, the newest release of Paradox. The Windows version offers easy migration from the DOS product, DBase compatibility, OLE capability, and a new feature called an object inspector, which lets you change an object's properties on the fly. Software Grove had a nice product called Simply Messages, a Windows emulation of those familiar pink phone message slips. With Simply Messages, you can easily move phone messages around a network with the efficiency of email and the familiarity of the paper metaphor. And there were new add-on products to get Windows running faster. Tseng Labs introduced its new ET4000 graphics card, which lets you store digital video on the VGA card's memory rather than tie up system RAM. Tseng is a big proponent of the new Visa bus standard, saying a local video bus is the only way to move full motion video. The standard ISA bus, or the bus that you see out there for the most part today, uh, only transfers about 5 megabytes per second, which up until recently was totally adequate. 
uh, what local bus does is does a direct connect into the processor bus so that you can operate at the processor speed and allows you to transfer about 106 megabytes per second. So that allows video or VGA to run approximately six times faster, IDE controllers to run up to 500 percent faster, and uh, network to run about 60 percent faster with current controllers. Another company, Milex Corporation, also showed off Visa-compatible local bus system boards that let you move video data at the same speed as your CPU using a full 32-bit data path, thus avoiding the I.O. bottleneck of the typical AT bus. Hayes offered a new approach to an add-on, a way to speed up communications under Windows by taking the COM workload off the CPU. The ESP Accelerator Board for Windows is a dedicated COM port with its own microprocessor so that background communications do not take up valuable CPU resources. And yes, Windows NT was here with a variety of applications running under the new Microsoft 32-bit version of Windows. But still, no official product announcement, no shipping date, and no price on the newest version of Windows. Next up, portables, color printers, and pen-based computing. Portables, pen-based computers, color printers, and wireless LANs were other major themes at this fall Comdex. Grid debuted its new convertible laptop for users who want a keyboard and a pen pad. The convertible runs on a 25 MHz 386 SL and comes standard with a math coprocessor. It has a 125 megabyte hard drive with Windows for pen computing pre-installed. List price is under $3,000. In fact, pen-based portables were all over the place, though there seemed to be a new realistic view that pen portables were special vertical market machines and still couldn't handle everyday user applications. But we did find one man actually using this nifty-looking Samsung pen portable. A company called Dauphin was showing the only battery-operated color pen-based portable computer. While the market may still be narrow for this machine, Dauphin believes its next-generation pen PC will be a mainstream product. We believe that in order to really push the pen market, it really would call for a very small, lightweight, very powerful, feature-rich uh, computer that, that is um, totally IBM compatible, DOS compatible. And you know, um, this way, you really have a choice of either using the pen or as a keyboard. And in effect, it could be a total um, desktop replacement. Dolphin has a very aggressive plan working on you know, that kind of um, computer system that is literally within about two to two and a half pounds that is extremely powerful using uh, 486 uh, DX CPU and you, know, you can either use pen or you can use keyboard and it would have all the communication devices including cellular phone support, spectrum, um, network, everything is being built in. The Dauphin pen top features a removable hard drive cartridge which gives you lots of storage for only about a dollar per megabyte much less expensive than current solid-state storage technology. Microsoft demonstrated a truly amazing feat, a pen-based computer running Windows in Japanese. The challenge of creating a meaningful kanji character keyboard has still eluded most developers, so Microsoft just skipped over the keyboard problem and used its new pen-based system to do what comes naturally to the Japanese, just writing down those complex characters with a pen. There were pens of another sort over at FTG Data Systems, where they haven't given in to mice or trackballs. FTG was demonstrating the virtues of the light pen, claiming that direct command interaction on a desktop computer screen is still the simplest interface, requiring the least eye-hand coordination. The PXL 780 light pen interface simplifies installation by letting you plug the pen into a keyboard, mouse, or serial port. IBM was showing off its new ThinkPad notebook computers. There are several models, standard keyboard versions and pen-based versions, in monochrome and color. The ThinkPads are network-ready with built-in Ethernet ports. 
IBM was also demonstrating its portable PC radio, a standard notebook complete with cellular transmitter and receiver for wireless network communications. A company called Selectech unveiled AirLAN, a wireless local area network adapter that lets you link ordinary laptops or desktops via radio waves and promises seamless communications with existing standard networking systems. AirLAN attaches to the parallel port, so you don't have to go inside the computer to install the network. The portable wireless LAN adapter makes it easy to temporarily hook up to a network with your notebook PC without the usual setup headaches. At the verbatim booth, the emphasis was on the new PC-MCIA flash memory cards. Several portables sported PC-MCIA slots, especially in the sub-notebook category. Zenith showed off its new Zlite 320L notebook. It's a four-pound portable with two PC-MCIA slots, one for memory and one for peripherals. Available peripheral cards include fax modems, network ports, and wireless LAN adapters. Chips and Technologies was showing off their single-chip mini laptop microprocessor in several configurations, including this Olivetti sub-notebook, which comes with integrated voice processing capability. Simply load or save your files to the appropriate drive. The Chips and Technologies F8680 is a complete computer on a chip, needing only memory, storage, and peripherals. The news in color printing was not new technology, but lower prices. Canon unveiled its new CJ10 color printer using inkjet technology rather than thermal wax transfer. The inkjet-based printer means a price under $7,000 for this color printer, which can also do double duty as a scanner and color copier. The CJ10 offers 400 DPI resolution and up to 256 color gradations. Finally, LaserMaster offered an upgrade path for laser printer users who want professional level output but don't want to spend the money on high-end printers. This is the WinJet 1200 upgrade card, which converts an HP LaserJet 4 into a 1200 DPI printer that can give you camera-ready output and PostScript compatibility. LaserMaster also speeds up print output by doing the opposite of what the graphics people are doing, dumping processing overhead onto the computer's CPU and thus taking advantage of your 486 chip rather than depending on the slower processing speed inherent in most standard printer configurations. The era of the Intel 586 chip, or P5, now known as the Pentium, didn't quite get launched at this Comdex. Intel promised it would introduce the Pentium in the first quarter of 1993. But there was lots of pre-launch hoopla, including this invitation-only presentation on the power of the Pentium. There were demonstrations of prototype systems using the Pentium processor. Intel claims the new generation CPU will be two to three times faster than a 486. And Intel says the Pentium will be fully downward compatible with the x86 line of CPUs. It was clear at this Comdex that the computer business is now a global industry, with hardware and software development taking place on every continent. There were exhibitors here from Asia, Europe, Canada, and the Middle East. Israel was the featured country at the Comdex National Resources Forum. Motorola, IBM, Hewlett Packard, Digital and Microsoft have software development facilities in Israel. Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates said the software business is the ideal startup industry for a small country. But the software industry that Microsoft is part of I think will be of increasing importance in Israel. In fact I think it's fair to say it'll probably be the uh, sector of greatest growth both for small companies uh, and for large companies. Um, the software business is an incredible business. It's one that's totally dependent on high quality personnel. Um, the, the products you build um, can sell in the millions if you simply have a product that, that is better than other people or gets to market before other people. So the focus is not on uh, low cost of production. The focus is on building a group of engineers that knows how to work together, um, uh, can move forward and build great products and get them out into the marketplace. Gates said the issue in international technology development today is not distance, but speed of communication, and that the only way to be successful in the software business is to develop worldwide and to sell worldwide.
If there was one overriding theme at this fall conduct show, it was that everyone seems to be shedding their old image and trying to redefine their business. Word Perfect is no longer a word processor company. They were exhibiting under a banner that said Beyond Words. Lotus is no longer a spreadsheet company. Their theme here was communications products. WordStar wasn't showing off a word processor. They were selling what they called writing enhancement tools. And over at the IBM booth, big blue staffers were wearing large buttons saying a whole new shade of blue. So it was out with the old, in with the new, as computer companies struggled to reposition themselves in the quick changing computer marketplace of the 90s. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffe at Fall Comdex in Las Vegas. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1-800 366-9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal. Vegas and Viva.